agenda for today uh, is I'll be handing over in a minute to Kel, who's the Calibrate project coordinator, who will give an introduction to the project and talk about what the vision is for the Nanomist Governance Portal. Uh, and then Somic from Artec will take over and talk, go run through the portal and give uh, an overview of the portal. And I believe Somic is, will be using Slido later and he'll tell you all about that, uh, about how you can actually provide some feedback. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have uh, an opportunity for any question and answers that people may have. But for now, I will just hand over to Keld. Uh, just quickly find him and unmute him and give Keld presentation rights. And then I shall ask Keld to give an introduction to Calibrate and the vision for the Nano Risk Governance Portal. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, I will start sharing my screen and hopefully you see a presentation coming up now. <clears throat> yes, so uh, my name is uh, Kjell Elstrup Jensen and uh, I work at the National Research Center for the Working Environment and I will give you an introduction to the Calibrate project and talk about the vision for the NanRisk governance portal that we are going to have some um, show demonstration of uh, during today's presentations. <clears throat> but first of all, uh, I'll go into a brief uh, presentation or a brief um, outline uh, of the project or explanation of the project. So first of all, Calibrate is uh, in short for performance testing, calibration and implementation of a next generation systems of systems risk governance framework for nanomaterials. And the systems of systems thought in this uh, title is that we try to connect methods for, for risk governance and information for risk governance in a common place. Um, project at a glance, um, as I mentioned, we are coordinating the project here from uh, the National Research, Research Center for the Working Environment in, in Copenhagen. And it's uh, done scientifically by me and then also by strong assistance from my administrative coordinator, Marina Mosa Johansson. We have a very strong uh, group consisting of 24 partners uh, across Europe, but also from the USA and from South Africa, uh, who has participated in, in the project. Um, and uh, in particular, the uh, non-European Adjunct University, RTI, and the National Institute of, of Occupational Health in South Africa. We had a total budget of 9.7 million euro um, and from that 8 million euro was uh, provided by the European Commission. We were running for 42 months and this is the very last day of the research um, project. Um, so this uh, is actually the end. We had a key objective in the project that was to develop a nano risk governance framework and a web-based tool for assessment and management of human and environmental risks of nanomaterials but also of nano enabled products uh, and we should cover during innovation and use and the framework and the tools uh, should be aimed to provide possibilities for screening of apparent and perceived risks and trends in nanotechnology we should be able to do control banding, qualitative and fully integrated uh, predictive quantitative risk assessments, and we should be able to run at different information levels. And as you can imagine, this is a challenge when we talk about innovation. Sometimes you start with very little information about your the risks associated with your material or product. We would also try to develop or integrate safety by design assessment and multi-criteria decision support. <clears throat> um, and finally, uh, enable risk monitoring, management and supporting uh, with guidance documents. Uh, from our perspective, the initial starting points were the so-called Cooper State Skate Product Innovation Model, uh, which is a well-known innovation model in, in engineering and uh, developments. Um, and then the established ISO 31000 risk governance framework, as well as the emerging risk management framework that what at that time was uh, developed in a German document. 
So if you go back to the conceptual thought in our project, we wanted to combine the innovation funnel, which is shown here by a state skate model where you have a discovery and idea in the beginning, and then you go through different gates where decisions are made, whether your innovation product is going to continue till the end uh, to be launched on the market, and finally with uh, monitoring during uh, a post-launch uh, review. So in between each of these gates, we have different project stages or project phases. So we have discovery and ideas, scoping, building a business case, research and development, testing and validation and launch, and then the monitoring phase. To try and improve the uh, basically risk management and the uh, risk mitigations during innovation, we propose to combine the emerging risk management framework or risk management framework more solid into this uh, innovation funnel. So at each of the gate decisions, um, environmental and human and product safety and health was also considered as part or should also be considered as part of the um, decision uh, basis. Naturally, when you're at an early state of innovation, you might have, may have a very low level of information. So often you would need to uh, base your assessments on qualitative and semi-quantitative predictive risks uh, assessments in the beginning. And towards the end, when you go to the market, you need to have quantitative predictive uh, test data driven uh, results for your risk assessment. And the conceptual idea is because um, uh, is founded by the idea and the understanding at this point um, when we started the project that a lot of the uncertainty related to the acceptance of nanomaterials and nanoproducts was really related to the uncertainty about the safety of the nanomaterials and the nanoproducts. So if safety is considered as part of the innovation process, then we would build and maintain better confidence in the risk assessment and more trustworthy risk communication and governance. But to be able to do this, we need to have uh, tools aligned to user needs and capacities. So if you're going to do this kind of assessment in an innovation lab, the method should also be applicable to personnel that may not be uh, educated specialists in risk assessment, but would be able to handle this on a daily basis in the risk management at uh, innovation lab, R&D um, or company level. Another factor is that uh, tool testing and validation is key to reach confidence. This was a clear evidence from scientific literature surveying stakeholders about this issue. Uh, and lastly, testing and validation requires appropriate test data, which uh, showed up to be a very, very important and cumbersome exercise in our project to get to this point. We also had some requests by the European Union on the research strategy. Uh, first of all, they would like us to really harvest, build on the results that had been generated in previous projects, but also try to get information, data and uh, methodologies from ongoing and planned research in, uh, in the area of uh, risk governance and the frameworks of risk governance. Um, they would also uh, really focus on the stakeholder needs and concerns. Um, and we should include those of the insurance sector and we should also try to make an effort to uh, really understand the risk perception of the different stakeholders. <clears throat> there should also be a clear focus on the testing, uh, calibration and further development of risk prioritization or banding tools for both human and environmental risks. Uh, we took it a step further in the project because we also aim to do quantitative risk assessments in, in our project. We should emphasize on the development of guidance for important issues in risk assessment. And finally, we should improve the equity and trust in risk communication by better understanding of the risks and the benefits and the uncertainties. Uh, and in this way, try to get a basis, create a better, better basis for, for risk acceptance. Uh, so to be able to meet these requests and uh, do our work, we have been working in four uh, main domains in the project. Um, one part is on the risk governance framework development. Another pillar is on the aligning with the stakeholders, which is key for informing both the framework development, but also pillar three on the model development and testing, because the stakeholders uh, knowledge and capacity was used as a criteria for 
selecting the methods uh, for our um, risk governance. And the information from the stakeholders were also used to build the framework uh, for the nano risk governance. And in the fourth pillar, we have the database development. Uh, as I said, it was uh, rather huge work to, to do this and identify data that could be used for testing our tools. I will not go more into detail of this. You can go back to the presentations we had uh, two days ago, uh, which are available from our webinars uh, from, uh, from the Calibrate homepage. As I said, stakeholders' needs and competences were very important for us to map out, and uh, we try to uh, approach as many uh, types of stakeholders as possible in the project, uh, both through uh, invitations, uh, surveys, and dialogue meetings. Uh, and some of these uh, results were uh, we were able to identify that uh, generally uh, the stakeholders considered worker health and environment as the most critical aspects uh, when it came to to the risks and understanding on where the risks were. There were also um, maybe more from the civil society a larger uh, risk perception than in all other stakeholder groups and that was an interesting outcome. We could also see that uh, the concerns uh, of products varied quite uh, significantly or uh, quite dramatically among uh, some of the stakeholders. In general, in general, the um, civil society or users were more concerned about products that uh, where people could come in direct contact with the products, so like in food and uh, food packaging, textiles, and so forth. But all agree that chemicals um, are among the most critical um, substances for, for nanomaterials of concern. Another area we looked into was uh, what was the behavior in workplaces. So how were they behaving regarding the identification of the risk and management of the risks? Uh, and this is the lower right corner, um, sorry, right corner image. Something happened here. Um, where we see that uh, or we can classify the uh, companies into passive, reactive, active, and proactive, and finally exemplary companies. And we found that uh, there was a widespread of companies, uh, how they classified in, in this type of uh, category. Uh, and there was generally a large need for better information about nanomaterials, how to do assessments, um, and trust in that uh, risk management measures actually worked. Some stakeholder requests from to the nano risk governance framework was the, that we should be providing access to nano information. Uh, it should be flexible and easy to use for a wide range of specialists. Um, and it should allow for both human and environmental uh, risk assessment. Uh, and it should be able to cover different exposure routes and release scenarios. We should also consider uh, or be able to consider existing and future generations of nanomaterials. Uh, we should bring it up to state of the art in knowledge and it should be qualified uh, for and aligned with the existing regulatory frameworks. And uh, it was, was also a uh, clear request uh, or hope that we could ac get, give access to exhaustive databases or data libraries, for example, on nanomaterial properties or risks or, or hazards or exposure, etc. So this built or made us build up a vision for the nano risk innovation governance portal. So the portal should become a central site for gathering or linking out uh, to validated information, results and tools to uh, enable support to nano risk uh, innovation governance and in particular the, the risk assessment and management um, approaches. It should also provide the researchers and industry a project platform uh, from which they can manage their nano risk assessment and management and the overall go governance during a nano innovation process as well as production. So the portal should provide qualified, trustworthy information on nanomaterials and nano enabled products, their safety and different stakeholders risk perception. We should demonstrate or have demonstrated and validated tools uh, including horizon scanning tools, risk assessment and risk management tools that have been thoroughly tested and validated by performance testing. We should also give access to qualified nano safety data for 
giving access uh, to information uh, and especially support the nano risk governance tools when possible. And finally, uh, come up with guidance and good practice information relevant for the various stakeholder groups. So data collection was a big exercise, as I mentioned. Uh, basically, we looked into the existing phys physical chemical data and hazard data and existing release and exposure data. Um, and from collecting those, we found uh, some materials, some case studies that could be uh, further elaborated. A few was actually complete and that uh, forced us to do a uh, data gap filling. And we also was, it was necessary to generate new studies to expand the uh, uh, well-defined or um, information-rich data sets to be able to test our models. Um, so finally, we uh, ended up with uh, 26 plus uh, data sets on uh, materials with uh, derived no effect or measurable uh, effect levels and basic uh, physical chemical data. Um, and these were done on individual nanomaterials and benchmark, a few benchmark materials as well. On the exposure side, we had uh, 25 to 50 data rich value chain case studies, uh, mostly from the workplace uh, that also were identified to match tool input requirements. So the 25 are the case studies with a very high level of information and the 50 are slightly lower, but can use, be used for, for some of the less demanding tools uh, regarding information requirements on contextual information. The next step was the identification and selecting and selection and testing of the tools for the NanoRisk governance framework. So uh, we had our different products where we have identification and assessment of the models and tools. We have uh, testing against data, uh, adjustments or calibration according to the first round of testing and then a second round of testing where we do the actual performance testing and finally demonstration of the tools in given frameworks. And when that is done, the tool is qualified for uptake into the Calibrate NanoRisk Governance Framework. So this is basically what I want to introduce when it comes to the NanoRisk Governance Portal. And um, for more information, you can go to the uh, www.nanocalibrate.eu to see some of our results and uh, also other sources uh, where we profile some information. Um, and on our webpage, you can also get further information of the specific um, work that has been conducted through fact sheets that we have been developing. There's already a large suite of fact sheets and a few more will arrive in the coming, coming week or two. So by this, uh, we should go forward and uh, jump into the NanoRisk Governance Portal uh, by Shamek. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Keld. So I'll just quickly make uh show it presenter mm -hmm. and you're already unmuted so please feel free to go ahead Shemek. all right thank you sean uh thank you kel and welcome to everyone who joined us for this webinar and my name is shamik chakravarti from steinweiss advanced risk technologies in germany and we were part of the calibrate project uh, especially developing uh, with the development of the NRG portal, Nano Risk Governance Portal. So I will start with the origins of the portal and try to give an overview of the portal in five minutes. So just an outline what we want to cover in this uh, 15 to 20 minutes is origins of the portal. Why did we develop the portal? And the portal in five minutes, that's a fast forward version, maybe a extremely fast forward version of the portal. Then we would try to introduce a user case scenario where uh, there's a case scenario with a person called Jack and go through the portal and its features uh, using a uh, like story, let's say the tale of two tools. Okay, um, the origins of the portal started from the different tasks in the Calibrate project, which includes nano risk identification, um, modeling, governance, databases, uh, collection of case studies, um, 
tools for testing and producing guidances. These were part of different work packages which were condensed into uh, work package eight, which was the, the work package uh, involved with developing the portal. And at the end of this pyramid coming down, we have three distinct parts of the portal, which includes the interactive public web page, secondly, the governance portfolio, and the portal tools. And going forward in the future, this would be disseminated and exploited and probably used in different uh, scenarios in industry and other sources. So there are three, as I mentioned, there are three key features of the portal, starting with the interactive public page, the portal for tools and guidance, and innovation governance portfolio. I'll start with what's in the interactive public page. So this is a public page which is with, which was formed basically to provide information on nanomaterials to a wide range of audience. So here, uh, people can get access to information on everything nano. So what is nanotechnology? Explanation of what is nanoscale? What's trending in nano? And we also have a dedicated section on R&D and industry zone. So I will go through what's trending in nano later on, uh, but I'll quickly go through the industrial and R&D zone where we added few more app-like features which would help uh, people from R&D and industry to come across the most relevant <coughs> databases, libraries, tools, and guidance documents to help with their um, with their day-to-day -day user scenario. That includes a couple of things like links to the nano data. Um, do I work with nano? Some guidances on if you do. And the calibrate full suite of calibrate fact sheets, uh, links to um, even website, as well as eReach tool. Coming to, to portal for tools and guidance. So it's a inside the portal member area. There's it's a one-stop shop for tools, guidances, libraries, and inspirational case studies to start your own. And we will go through this later on. And we will come across a suite of tested and validated tools during the overall Calibrate project, from horizon scanning tools to human and environmental exposure hazard and risk characterization tools. So there's a whole bunch of tools which have been implemented in the portal and uh, we will come across how to access them later on. Lastly, the innovation governance portfolio. It is a dedicated tool for innovation risk governance where we try to provide guidance and a flexible methodology and the interactive uh, UI to the users in terms of uh, managing innovation risk projects such that it will help in covering uh, project, um, let's say a proposed project from ideation phase all the way down to, let's say, review and launch and portfolio monitoring. Okay, so that was the end of um, the first part. And I don't know if I covered it in five minutes or seven, but uh, I'll move on to the next part of this presentation where I introduce you to the NRG portal and its general features. And for this, uh, I would actually go to uh, a user case scenario. So imagine um, it's called Ross Light and imagine company A, which is a new, um, a hypothetical company approaches company ABC, a paint company, and they propose a new photocatalytic substance which contains nano. And they say that it has great potential for indoor paint. Company ABC uh, is interested in the, in the 
in this uh, photocatalytic substance, but they think that there's further need for exploration on the possibilities. So they call up their project manager, and that's how we meet Jack. So Jack is new in the office. It's his first project related to nanomaterials. And what does he do? He goes on and tries the Calibrate NanoRays governance portal. And that's where we will start our demonstration. Okay, so now clicking on Hi. starting uh, the NanoRis gov dash portal, we start with uh, with going through the initial homepage, where Jack is uh, treated with a lot of information regarding nanomaterials and nanotechnology. And it's a clear overview of things which um, a person who's managing nano projects should uh, probably know. And we try to make it as easily available as possible. He goes to tries different things across the portal and also checks what's trending on nano. This is a dedicated horizon scanner, which was built for the Calibrate project. And in, in this case, it's searching for all the online news and articles which have uh, information regarding nanomaterials, in this case, nanotechnology. And on the right, it also shows the sources which it uses for uh, providing this risk radar map image and which has few points on it dedicated to keywords which are currently trending in nano. A user is also um, allowed to access these sources depending on what they're looking for. And we will go back to the portal for a more detailed analysis of the horizon scanner later on. Okay, so we have uh, nano nano in consumer database, we have uh, put the results from the stakeholder surveys performed during the Calibrate project. There's also information regarding how nanotechnology is governed in, especially in terms of regulations, research, and standards and practices. Furthermore, there's also uh, guidance is provided, which were produced through the project and there's a very uh, easy to use interface where a filter is added, which, where, which can actually filter the guidances based on selected domains and Cooper stage gates. Here, uh, Jack is opening the fact sheets and checking out what, uh, what information, condensed information can he get which is which can be useful for his scenario and as you can see you can filter them through domains and, and Cooper state gates all right back to the home page just a brief look at the industry and R&D zone uh, as I mentioned there's a, we try to make or collate information which would be more relevant to the R&D and industry uh, personnel and try to make uh, an easy to use interface for reaching those uh, tools, guidances and information. There's also a e-learning platform with um, updated information on reach. So that's just one of the links that Jack could have chose and he chose this one and then Jack was interested to explore further 
and then he tried to check out how he can use the portal and furthermore how he can use go through the members area and try to have the first go at try out with the portal we have added um, login using social network website like LinkedIn so it would be easier to log in and uh, switch from one app to the other not all apps support this feature but some of them do but there's also a normal login feature that users can log into the portal uh, this is the dashboard of the portal where you can see on the left we have tried to put all the information or related to menu bar and actually uh, the menu bar allows to switch from one uh, subject to the other we will find more uh, uses for them but from top of my mind i can mention that you can access to the dashboard the tool catalog uh, project assessment project started by a user guidances and data libraries and for the first instance Jack goes through the tool catalog and accesses a suite of tools as you can see it's, um, it's uh, all the calibrate um, tested and validated tools which have been put together here and they are filtered based on selected domains and Cooper stage gates uh, there's also tool performance results, which Keld was talking about. So we made it mm, made it easier for people to check tool performance results before uh, selecting the tool for their own scenarios. So this is uh, sifting through a performance test result for NanoSafer, but he decides to do something a bit more easier where he starts a horizon scanner for a material uh, which is in the ross light uh, compound and he uses nano risk radar to do so so getting into the risk radar is as simple as that click and this is uh, the radar interface and and it shows a network map for already done studies on horizon scanning. So he wants to start a new horizon scanning for the material. And what he does is goes through the different, um, different ways he can visualize the result. So he's, he's already checking out the results for a search which was done on nanotechnology and going through the network map for uh, checking out the legend where it shows the, the significance of the, the dots on the network map as well as the checking for different sources or all sources depends on how, how he uh, chooses to filter his sources this is called a trend uh, monitoring where you can provide a date from and to date to see how and when some of the key issues are more important than not so if something is getting more relevance in in publications in uh, online social network or web pages or or others online sources they would be flagged here as relevant and hence their criticality score would actually go up and something which goes off the radar would actually show a broken link there is a description of of the things which would help someone to make their own horizon scan for their own subject material 
So Jack tries to do something like that. And here he goes to the user manual and try to do it for TIO2. And he goes to the report and, and at the end he manages to prepare a report and download a report, uh, including all the sources and a score with, uh, with results from different sources. So a higher score is something which is more important and would be uh, of more relevance for that topic. Next, he wants to start recording his uh, horizon scanning into the portal. So all he does is uh, start a new assessment project, puts the project name, he found he found the material already in the database which have been put from the calibrate project so but he can add his other material if if there is more material inside the raw slide product uh, adds a small description goes to the domains, if whichever one is relevant for the particular tool and test. Clicks on the life cycle scenarios, which, uh, in, which he's interested in. Can, goes to, uh, he adds an exposure scenario where he would now store all his information from the horizon scanning tool and flags it as a horizon scanning type with all the project name and materials already uh, exported from his assessment project. He duplicates his description for this exposure scenario and plans to share this. Then he goes to the tool section where uh, he has this um, ability to add or remove tools. He can choose multiple number of tools for the same exposure scenario. And you can imagine that instead of horizon scanning, that could be nano, nano safer or guide nano for uh, real exposure scenario uh, risk, uh, studies. And then comes across the inputs required for okay, uh, sorry, there's a small gap. <laughs> so here uh, is where he adds titanium dioxide into his study. So this Apparently, Jack forgot to do this, so he goes back to the risk radar and mentions that and puts it on on the on the risk radar, and then he saves it and checks sources for for different materials. Here you can see that each source has different number of articles related to titanium dioxide, which he's looking for. And he's selecting the sources based on what new uh, articles are published for that uh, particular time slot. So here he mentioned a start date, a repeat every for number of days, and the search for the last uh, in terms of how far he wants his search to be. And after putting that, he uh, generates a report and which um, I already showed you before. Uh, there's also a, a quick feature where he can add more sources or request for more sources in the nano risk radar. Okay, back to the portal. Now he remembered that he forgot to do that, came got his report back and back into the portal he is asked to put some input parameters for the horizon risk scanning 
and you can see that the, there are three small uh, input parameters for this. It depends on the tool which you're using, which input parameters, important input parameters are asked for. So a user can wish to uh, put these in input parameters, which are tool specific. And if they are on the Calibri database, they should be shown up here so that they can refer them in case they are not sure about the parameters. After putting the input parameters here, Jack goes on to save his input parameters and and goes to the results, hopefully. Going to the results, he opens up the results window for the tool specific uh, result window, in this case, Nano Restrator, and he tries to upload his results already obtained from the Nano Restrator. And it's as easy as uploading a document uh, for an email. And at the end, he updates the result and gets a summary of his uh, project. And this was the end of how to use this portal for inputting the tools and parameters for different, uh, for different tools. Now I would go back to my, my slides and we will start with um, an interactive session on how we can use uh, Slido for participating in an active poll. So for people who already have used Slido, it's, um, you have to log in to Slido, which is sli.do, and enter the event code as portal, all small, so P-O-R-T-A-L, and we will ask you a couple of questions, which would be displayed right here. So if you all can go to Slido, and you would see uh, um, a, a question right up on your screen. So please feel uh, feel free to go to Slido, sli.do, and enter the code portal. Our first question is, which stakeholder group do you represent? So, that would be an easy question uh, to understand what's the uh, breakup of our audience here. All right, for people who are still not in Slido, it's you have to log into sli.do and enter the event code P-O-R-T-A-L, portal. Maybe a few more seconds till we go to our next question.
All right, then I guess we can move to the next question. So the next question is, in your opinion, the top three user types who will benefit the most from the portal? What do you think it would be? Is it managers or workers or safety officers from industry? Technicians? The material innovators, product innovators, researchers, general public. I can see risk assessors and consultants very popular. Or is it authorities and regulators? All right, so we nearly have as many responses from the second question as the first one. Just two more shy from the from 19, which was on the first one. All right then, I think uh, we can uh, say that that's the final result for the second question. And with that, I would like to switch my presenter rights to uh, Sean or Kel. Hi, so my kitchen. Hey, Rory Kel's taking over for the next session, so I'll just quickly. Uh, Tell the presenter again. Okay. So, Keld. Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Amik, for uh, this introduction and uh, also exploring a little bit where we think the, what the audience think that the tool can be used. Um, now we look forward to uh, talk more about the nano risk innovation governance framework and and the web tool. And um, first, I will give so yeah introduction to to the concept that we were thinking, of, and then Sean will present later on the the uh, the tool in operation. So this is the um, second large tool element that we have been developing within the project. So first of all. Um, I can get my screen activated here. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> so you remember my slide before on the conceptual nano risk innovation framework, where we had the uh, complete gate innovation funnel and the emerging risk management tools, risk management tools uh, established, tools at the end towards the launch. Uh, covering qualitative to semi-quantitative predictive tools to quantitative predictive and estimative tools. <clears throat> and this should build our confidence. Um, so what we what do we mean by bridging the innovation model and the emerging risk management model concepts? Uh, well, on the top line, you see the basic uh, a basic structure of an emerging risk management framework. Um, according to the Zen Workshop Agreement um, in 2013, so basically it consists of horizon scanning, early warning, pre-risk assessment um, with context concerns, identification of risk scenarios, and evaluation. And then, at a high informa information levels, you can do an actual risk analysis, risk characterization, and evaluation, and then proceed towards risk management decision, communication, and consult consultation, and then finally monitoring. 
And the idea, as I mentioned, was to couple this uh, framework, the emerging risk management framework for each of the project stages in the innovation uh, process. So normally we would go for identification of a risk uh, and then we'll conduct a risk assessment. Um, but as we know, with nanomaterials, this is often not possible without generating a, a lot of new information. So in fact, we could go towards a pre-risk assessment and then stepwise build up our information to be able to do a full risk assessment and finally risk uh, management and decision. Um, but in innovation, we of, often have to move on before we actually generate uh, all the information required. So if we can build enough confidence in the pre-risk assessment methodologies, we can actually manage and decide on our risks before. Uh, but of course, it doesn't mean that we can jump the fence and not complete a risk assessment uh, before we go to the market. But we can maybe uh, on an informed basis uh, manage our risk based on pre-risk assessment methods. <clears throat> so constructing it or taking this back into the overall framework idea uh, and looking into how is uh, risk governance and what are different recommendations for uh, nano risk governance or governance in general and safe innovation, responsible uh, innovation. We come up with a two layer model where we are on one layer have the, um, there's some delay here. Uh, on one level have the uh, governance layer which is uh, basically the accountable governance, governance board, uh, which is established to manage the governance project and to make the important decisions on whether a innovation project can go forward or we need to go back and develop further information or rework the entire idea or we decide to stop the project. <clears throat> And the uh, governance layer uh, are the layer or the board where the questions, decision making questions are, are established. And uh, then we have the second layer, which is the operational project layer where uh, data are generated. So this is the specific governance of sub projects that are established to generate and provide all the knowledge and data and documentation that is needed to develop and launch the innovation an answer to the questions, as I mentioned before, raised by the by the governance board. And this uh, approach uh, reflects completely the ISO 21505 uh, model um, that was published in 2017. If we try to convert that into a graphical illustration, then we have our uh, innovation funnel um, sitting in between the uh, phase gate nano risk sorry, Nano Risk Innovation Governance Board. Uh, so this is layer one in, in our model. And then we have the project layer in below the uh, phase gate model. And the model uh, layer or the uh, sub project layer, sorry, is, um, is then the layer where the products are run uh, at, at the detailed data generating level and the governance board are defining the criteria, they're setting the products, they set the questions that needs to be answered, they score the answers and they decide on whether the project goes forward. Uh, so at the sub-project level, uh, as I mentioned, they are responsible for running the products, uh, obtaining the knowledge, assess the knowledge and report back to the uh, governance board and answer the questions by the governance board. And the products can be launched, uh, can be few, it can be many, depending on the requirements of the individual products. So the flexibility in this system is that you pick the products that are needed to answer the questions at the different project phases during your innovation. Normally, you would have few, few products in the beginning, and um, then it would expand during the R&D test and validation process. Uh, in this uh, setup, we have uh, uh, separated the uh, monitoring phase, so the portfolio, and called it the portfolio monitoring, because we decide that after the review and launch, the project goes over into the um, established production in a company. So this is the monitoring phase. So basically for following the ISO uh, def uh, specifications, uh, this is then moving the project or the innovation into portfolio governance. So now it's part of the business 
and here we have assigned a project leader to monitor the, the projects. It can be, of course, also done in different ways. And this is a place where the nano risk radar, for example, could be used to, to monitor um, what is going on on the market. We have developed the project phase and gate specific guidance that are available in the portal in the tool that Shamit will show. Uh, and it can be uh, found directly at the, at the different state gates, but there's also a document uh, describing the pro process in, in greater detail. As I mentioned, we can have many products along the uh, phase gate innovation funnel. Uh, here we have selected uh, some that are quite typical. Um, you don't have to run through them all, but you can select the ones you need. Um, and we cover uh, basically most of the products that would be needed overall in an innovation project, uh, including uh, brainstorming events, uh, technical nanomaterial or product description, stakeholder events, um, mapping out nanomaterial and product characteristics, uh, cost benefit analysis, uh, evaluation of insurance aspects, marketing and production, etc. Uh, but of course, the focus in, in this area or in our work is mostly on the uh, safety aspects. So here we are more over in the corner of uh, developing the technical data sheets, collecting existing health and safety data, um, producing safety data sheets, uh, doing the risk assessments for workers, consumers and the environment, uh, but also to consider the uh, safety by design and stop principles uh, to create a safe production and a uh, safe product uh, during early stages of the um, of the innovation. Of course, we also have uh, requirements on the safety communication uh, internally, externally, and the regulatory compliance assessment. You can also do societal and ethical impact assessments, uh, and finally, of course, documentation at each of the stages. So when we talk about our pre-risk assessment and risk assessment process management and the safe innovation approach, which is the terminology that was established, I think, of the NanoRec2 project, um, we have on one side the pre-risk assessment and risk assessment and management side, where we need to uh, have a process through information gathering, performing occupational risk assessment, downstream user risk assessment, environmental risk assessment, and for ATX and safety of production, we also very early need to understand whether we have a risk of fire and explosion in, in the production. So the ones we see in blue are the, are the informations or the processes that you need or we propose to do very early in the, in, in the innovation project, maybe even before you, or in fact, before you, you start any production and work in the lab, you do your pre-risk assessments. And then we, you move to the uh, operational level then you need to also understand how to define your disposal and emergency procedures, uh, decide whether you need to conduct monitoring during your, your production uh, and innovation. And finally, of course, training to the R&D uh, workers um, during the process. I talked about the safety by design and STOP principles. So STOP is the substitution, technical, operational, and personal protection assessments. And here we have uh, lined out a number of questions that uh, one should consider uh, immediately when you start the innovation process or when you consider using a new uh, material, um, whether it can be um, chemically or the chemical hazard can be reduced, uh, whether the materials and chemicals can be reused, um, also whether there's a risk during production that can be reduced by risk management measures, other environmental risks during production that can be reduced, be reduced um, or can it be reduced in the use phase downstream? Uh, do we have risk during uh, environmental risks that can be reduced during downstream use and uh, is the fun, uh, is, the, is it possible to fully or partially recycle the product, for example, and finally consider the risks during waste and disposal. So these are aspects that uh, one can consider quite early in, in the innovation project uh, and based on that hopefully make uh, good decisions on or at least informed decisions on what you select. So this is the uh, brief introduction to the uh, conceptual structure of our framework and then I we go back to Shomik uh, to give a 
demonstration on this. Thank you very much. Thank you ever so much for that, Kel. So I shall just quickly make sure my presenter again. Okay. Uh, all right. So thank you, Kel, for that introduction. And that was building the, the ground for actually demonstrating the Calibrate Nano Risk Innovation Governance Project tool. And we start with our familiar Jack and the portal. So you can access the, the tool directly from the portal. And there are three steps in doing the task on the governance uh, portfolio tool. That's CAR, so checklist assessment reporting. And I will quickly go through this so that I introduce it here on the presentation before moving on to the video. And as you can see on the left, there is a menu bar with, um, again, with the same thematics as the portal. So you have everything you need on the left hand side in the menu bar and including the very important guidances. And we tried to cover many of uh, almost all the phases and gates on the Cooper stage uh, uh, innovation funnel. And there's also general guidance in terms of conceptual design uh, establishment of board general guide for gate. All right, at this point, I would switch to my video where I have, where I log in to the portfolio. And the first thing is uh, a screen. This is our dashboard and this is starting fresh. And the first thing Jack does is to open manage portfolios and start a new portfolio and adds details, especially regarding the project. So in this case, Ross Light. Uh, and finally, uh, he, after putting it on the portfolio, he starts a project. Now, before starting the project, you might notice that there are two layers, which Keld was also talking about. One is the governance board layer, which is in blue. And secondly, the operational project layer where Jack is responsible for conducting the sub projects under the layer. You can also see that there are some eyes next to the, the projects. And those are for indicative tool tips for consisting of guides to understand what you can do uh, in those phases or gates. Next, he goes to the project, opens a new project. And as you can see, it's already uh, in that project. And And he adds in the, the board number or his name into and saves it to the, the checklist. Now the next step is to add a checklist onto the project. And here uh, he adds a brainstorming on technical feasibility as one of the checklist onto the, the operational project. It's as simple as clicking on a button on the right. And as soon as uh, you can, you can see that there's many such checklists on this screen. What it means is these are some of the checklists which we have, or checklists or sub projects, which we have identified in Calibrate project. And uh, a user is given the option to, to directly add them or even edit them before adding on to their projects. In this case, uh, Jax goes on to brainstorming and technical feasibility, adds it to his project and goes directly to assessment. Under assessment, 
he comes across the sub project here, which is uh, correctly put in the ideation phase, which is P1 and goes to the action as assess, starts making the assessment based on uh, gathered knowledge and data. I would go through this uh, quickly because probably Jack took longer than this. And he commits this report. After uh, storing his assessment, he goes back to the dashboard. And as you can see, it's now populated with his operational project Ross Light, and he expands it and checks that his assessment score is shown in the dashboard. He can go through the results, check results for each of the sub projects. And you can see there's a completeness score with a threshold, which can be changed or defined by the user. And you, he can also print a report with the score and few other details in in and print it out for the next meeting. Okay, now imagine I'm Jack's boss. I do the same, but on the governance layer. So I also go to project, but you can see there are two different layers here. One is governance board, the other is operational project. Now, as Jack's boss, I add my name into the governance layer. And similarly, I have my own checklist, which I do a separate uh, analysis on Jack's work. And I will have my own separate res result and a report which I can use for uh, assessing the the viability of the project if to go to different gates. You can see the tool tips are also there to help users understand what each of these gates and phases uh, mean. And there is, uh, as I said, guidances in terms of conceptual design, establishment of board, and general guidance on gates. And for people starting out, it would be very useful to go through the guidances before starting a new project or portfolio. Okay, so I come back to my presentation here. And as I mentioned, uh, there are two layers, but the, the important part for the governance board layer is they have the ability or the additional uh, decision to, to make the project go, rework or stop. And depending on that, you can move uh, forward or rework on the, on the project layer as well. So in this case, uh, he got a go ahead from his uh, from his governance board, and then he moved on to other sub projects similar to this. And you can have access to the case studies and the guidance documents through the portal. And all you have to do is go into nanorisgov-portal.org and access them. Okay, now uh, for the last part of this presentation is another poll, which is on Slido again. I have already activated the third question for today, and that is, on a scale of one to five, how would you rank the apparent usability of the content and the types of tools provided on the portal? And I can see that we already have six, six people who answered. So I would request everyone to uh, answer this question.
Uh, we'll wait a couple more seconds till the next question, and that is the last question, I promise you that. Okay, moving on. Uh, for the last question, it's a textual question, so please provide your overall impression and suggestions for improvement, new features, etc. I will keep this question open while we have our Q&A session, and you're uh, you're invited to to answer this question as well as uh, go ahead with the Q&A section planned after this. Okay, thank you so much, Samik. Uh